Hi everyone, I'm really pleased to be joined tonight by uh, Danny and Neil Simo. Um, thanks for joining me tonight. Scott, no problem. Evening. Evening. Um, so you, you're joining us to do the uh, the big 2021-2022 season reveal of the squad. Um, it's exciting. Obviously, um, I've got the list in front of me, so I've got a little bit of a preview on that to see the names coming in. I'm excited to go through those with you. Um, so what we'll do is um, in the next sort of few minutes, we'll we'll go through it in sections, look at the sort of keepers, defenders, midfielders and strikers, hear your thoughts and opinions and uh, any stories you've got from uh, from this season signing them up, really. Um, but I thought, yeah, it, um, for those of you that are kind of new to watching us, um, Danny, I don't know if you want to give yourself a little bit of an instruction. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, Danny Greaves, uh, first team manager at Froome. Um, been in charge now. This will be my fourth season in charge um, and still to complete, uh, well, I think, one one full season in the in the first three years. So, yeah, looking forward to a, a fourth year and hopefully a, a full season and a, a successful one as well. But if I remember right, you're also waiting one game to reach a milestone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So three seasons and still haven't done 100 games. So, yeah, 99 not out at the moment. <laughs> And Simo. Yes, evening. Uh, Neil Simon's assistant manager. Um, been here officially uh, on the record books one season, but uh, I'm not sure we can class last season as a season, to be fair. So uh, we'll go with uh, a part of a season. But uh, yes, into my second uh, calendar year, should we say. Um, very much look forward to it. So we'll call you a cup specialist, shall we, after last season? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah. Were all right. yeah. That's, um, that's a good point, actually. We never ever had a cup run, did we? Apart from uh, apart from last year. So Simo can take the take the credit for getting a couple of rounds in the FA Cup and what was it first go. first round proper in the trophy or yeah. second round? Uh -huh. it, I can't remember what it was now. First or second? second. Both in the club's history, anyway. Whatever it was. So. <laughs> <Simo. laughs> And um, so just speaking about that, obviously we haven't really talked and I've caught up with some of the players um, in the various interviews that we've we've done in the last few weeks about last season that kind of won't draw on that too much and obviously the disappointment of it being curtailed. But for you guys, obviously you've built a great squad um, flying high in the cup, obviously the season before with the league as well. How frustrating has it been just to sort of see it all curtailed? Yeah, very, very frustrating. Um Every, obviously, every year you, you try and put in the work to try and build a squad, um, build the foundations behind the scenes to, to try and ultimately go on and, and win something. And obviously that first season so close. Um, last season, obviously, is very, very early doors in terms of the league. But the way they crammed the, the cup games into the start of the season gave us a good opportunity to have a good cup run. Um, as I mentioned, just, just then joking, we got to the, I believe it was the first round proper of the FA Trophy, maybe the second second round proper of the FA Trophy, um, furthest the club's ever been, and we never got a chance to, to go and play that game, which would have been a, a great occasion for the club. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's been it's been a fr frustrating couple of years, but we've got to take the positives from it. Um, we had a relatively young squad. Um, everyone now is that, that little bit year, a uh, little bit older, a um, little bit more mature, a little bit more experienced. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we can take that and, and use that frustration of sat here doing nothing for the best part of a, a year to, to go and kick kickstart uh, when the season does finally resume. Obviously, we know, Sorry. obviously we know we've got a confident bunch of lads. <laughs> when we've been doing our interviews, they've, they've set their aspirations high. They've set the kind of a bar of what they want to achieve this year. Is that is that coming directly from you or is that coming from themselves or...? I think that's um, that could be seen as a positive and a, and a negative sometimes. I think um, from the the moment we got relegated two years ago, um, we set the culture that we want to win every single game. Um, we want to progress in cups. We want to um, ultimately try and get promotion. So that that's kind of been instilled in the players. Um, but we do it. That's our ambition. We want to try and win games, get promoted, whether that's through winning the league or for, for a playoff place. Um, but we're respectful of everyone else in the league. There's, at the start of the season, there's, what is there, 19 clubs in, in, in our league. Um, and every one of them at the start of the season will be saying, we've got a chance of getting promoted. Um, so we know we're in the same boat as everybody else. We've got to work harder than everybody else. We've got to play well. 
and we've got to do our job, myself and Simo, um, to have a chance of, of getting into that that top five, which is ultimately our ambition. But yeah, it's, I think it's just been embedded in the players. That's the culture. We've signed winners. Um, and yeah, I think Simo, Simo would probably echo that coming in new last summer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, look, obviously, season before that, you know, obviously the relegation and stuff like that, and it needed a bit of a shift in mentality. And, and you know, that's what... That's what we're here to do, you know. You, you know, we want we want to be successful at what we do. Um, us as management team, and and you know, we, and to be able to do that, you need players that have belief that they'll be successful at, at, at what they're going to do. So that's what that's the culture we try and, and and build. So it's no surprise they've they've come out in their interviews and and, and kind of all said that, which is which is pleasing. Uh, it's good, but we, we're the ones that got to go out and make it happen as well. So. Um, there's a bit of realization to it that you know we've got to make it happen, but yeah, absolutely, we have to have goals, we have to have desires, and you know I'm I'm pleased that you know the squad of to a man are, are aiming for 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 the top, which is good. Uh, yeah, I think you, as you say, the um, the players that we've talked to so far, all of them that have kind of mentioned that that factor that um, they could be one of many captains in this team, and. Mm. Although obviously Sam's got the thing, Sam was even like, it doesn't even bother me to be captain in the nicest possible way. It's um, because everyone takes responsibility and everyone's fighting for that same cause. And that, that's great to hear. It's great to see. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, again, that's something we try to instill in the players that we give them a foundation. Um, but then ultimately we want, we want leaders out there. We want people to drive each other. It can't just come from me and Simo all the time, just coming down on the players, being hard on the players and pushing them. Um, they do it within themselves as well as a, as a, as a group, which is, which is great for us. I, I compare everything to my first season in charge where managing the group was, was so difficult and so time consuming. And that was one of the things we wanted to address when we, when we reshaped the squad a couple of years ago. We wanted to bring in a bit of experience some players who have been there and, and done it in the past and um, some leaders, some proper men. Um, and yeah, we, we've done that. We've got a, we've, we've had a good group for the last couple of years and um, hopefully by the end of this call, we'll be able to say that we've got another good group um, going into the, the new season. But yeah, in terms, of, in terms of our ambitions for the league, I mean, you've only got to look at Siren Sester um, over the last 12 months, absolutely flying. I think on um, a points per game, if you just took the last 12 months, end of the season before and the start of that season, they would be, um, well ahead of everybody else, clear clear winners of the of that mini league if you like. Um, you've only got to look at Tottenham. Um, you know, they're they're making lots of noises out there. That they're, they're they're aiming for promotion and they're they're backing it up with some signings on paper, um, signing players out of the out of the national league, um, paying fees for players. So they're they're putting out a real statement of intent. Um, Winchester, Poulton, Larkle. They're always there or thereabouts. They always give you tough games. Um, and then you've got some, some people who may not have been in, in and around it last year, like Manor Farm, making some, making some big signings. Um, haven't previously been in the, in the top 10, but um, they're making noises. They want to try and win the league this year. And then, again, they're backing up with some signings on paper. Um, and then Plymouth Parkway um, coming into the league. Um, they've been assembling a squad over the last couple of years, taking... Um, step free Southern Premier um, players to drop down and play in the Western League, and and they've been on they've been on absolute fire for the last couple of years. And when you get promoted, you take that momentum with you. So um, I would expect them to be up there. So I mean, just then I've reeled off what seven, eight teams that that could be there or there, thereabouts. And then you always get somebody who comes out of the woodwork. Um, so it's it's going to be tough. You've got to earn the right week in week out. We know that. So as you mentioned, we've we've got um, some signings to talk about and the, the squad to sort of go through. Um, we've ne- we've obviously announced um, I think seven of the the squad so far. Um, but we'll, what I thought we would do is um, as we go through, uh, we'll kind of draw up the squad as you can see on the screen, and we'll just pencil them in as we go through and talk. So yeah, so I don't know if we want to start with the goalkeepers. I know we've already announced two of the goalkeepers. Is that how we're looking at the moment? Yeah, I'll let, I'll let Simo talk about goalkeepers. I know nothing about them. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I do want to say it. But, um, you know, uh, yeah, obviously, um, James Carey's uh, re-signed again this year. Obviously, he was a big, big sign. And obviously, he'd come in on, on loan previous to last season and done really well. 
Um, and then obviously he was with us last season, picked up a bit of an injury, so we, we had to bring some cover in uh, in Max last year. But uh, he's he's obviously clear of that injury now and was clear a long time ago, and, and he's getting back to some sessions that Danny's done with him. He's, he's shown that he's getting back to, to where we would expect him to be. So he's going to come into the season flying. He's hungry. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a great... It's a great things we'll have a you know your goalkeeper you've, you've got to be able to rely on you know you've got to have somebody in there that's 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 extremely reliable and, and going to do a job for you so yeah he ticks all that boxes so that that's really good and and alongside that we've got young Seth who, who's a fantastic prospect developed last year really well with the games that he got in with Bishop Sutton on loan um uh, subsequently has, has now gone on loan to Cainsham which um is going to be a fantastic experience for him playing in the Tool Station Prem um, against some real good teams at that level, uh, and again, that's going to be another step up for him and another uh, another season of education for him, which is going to push him on again. And then, before you know it, he'll be challenging James for the number one spot. So exactly, we're, yeah. we're really good uh, in, in the goalkeeping position, and we're really happy with that as well. Yeah, good, good. I think Seth's really pushing James now as well. Seth, Seth's come on leaps and bounds over the years of having come through our our youth setup. Um, and he's, he's really pushing James, which is great. James would want that. I want that. Um, we've also got um, a lad coming in on, on trial um, who will be with us for the first few weeks in, in pre-season, hopefully all pre-season, another young lad. And then we've got a, a couple of young goalkeepers in our academy um, that we think highly of, so they'll come, in for, they'll come in for training, which is great for the keepers. You want numbers. Um, they want to work together in training. So, um, yeah, we're in a, a decent place in that department. I've retired, by the way. <laughs> well, that's the biggest news. <laughs> um, that's brilliant. Obviously, we spoke to James. Um, obviously, people can watch that interview as well. Where he came across brilliantly. And obviously, he's got his head really screwed on. Um, so, yeah, let's just step forward a little bit. Um, we look at the sort of full-backs, wing-backs. So, we won't give away too much in positionally. But, uh, Danny, do you want to talk us through those? Yeah, of course. Um, so, we've already announced Joe. Um, Joe's been with us a couple of years, come on, um, leaps and bounds. He's really, really progressed as a player and really matured as a player. Um, but the good thing is he's still got so much more to give and he's, he's willing to, to learn and listen. And um, there's no doubt about it. In my opinion, Joe will go on and play at a higher level. Um, Jack Whitcomb um, has, has re-signed, which is, is brilliant. And give Jack a lot of credit. He came in on trial last year. Um, there was no no offer on the table for him. He came in on came in on trial. Um, had some really good recommendations. Um, he's a local boy, um, which is great as well. The fans love him. Um, he, I think he, he's the reason why our attendances have shot up, Scott. Um, <laughs> <laughs> bringing all his family and friends from from Froome. Um, but no, he's he, he's done absolutely brilliantly. Um, superb in preseason. We had we had a couple of injuries at the start of the season, so he got his he got his chance as well due to his performances, but he, he took it with both hands and um, yeah, really looking forward to seeing him kick on again next year. Um, and then we've also got um, Martin Lenahan, um, who's been with us. This will be his second season now. Um, sorry, his third season. Um, sorry, no, it is his second season committed to us um, and expecting some, some big things from, from Martin this year. And though he's got the bit between his teeth, he's, had an injury at the start of last season, which um, held him back and, and hindered him and, and made it difficult due to Jack Whitcomb's form and Joe's form for him to try and break back into the side. But level playing field now. And um, yeah, I don't think anybody's worked harder than, than Martin over the, over the off season. So really looking forward to seeing what, what Lens can do. Um, well, we know what he can do. So yeah, looking forward to seeing him back in a room show. So then <clears throat> slide, towards more, slide more towards the middle, shall we? So um, centre-backs, obviously we've, um, we've announced uh, Sam. Um, obviously he's the captain of the team. And there's, he wants to talk us through the, the, the next centre-backs. No, I could take you through the, the centre-backs. Obviously, Tilly's uh, the cornerstone of our, of our team and uh, he is the captain officially. You know, you know, we discussed about having several leaders on the pitch, but he is truly a leader in... in what he does um, on the pitch uh, and leads by example and also off the pitch training and uh, he is a true captain. So it's delighted to, to get him on, on board again for another season. I don't know how many seasons that is now. Maybe we worked out seven or something like that. Yeah, about seven, <laughs> isn't it? So yeah. Testimonial soon for him. 
Yeah, he's part of furniture now, to be fair. So, uh, so yeah, so we all know what TV is about, which is, which is really good to have on board. Um, Warren, uh, so uh, Warren Maidman, so Waz, uh, he, um, he is still progressing. Uh, and I think we started to see strides again from him last season in terms of his progression of maturity, uh, just knowing what to do, when to do it. Uh, I think he was clouded a bit, a bit previous to that in terms of what he should be doing and when and when to take a risk, when not to take a risk. But he really stepped up last year. And for me, he, he grew last year. I know it was a new short season, but you could see his performances were growing and he was maturing as a player. So really exciting for for Waz uh, this season. I think it's going to be a big season for him and a big step forward for him. So so that's great to, to also have him on board. Um, uh, and then we've got young Alex Hallett, um, who is uh, still developing, still very young. Uh, again, had a good season last year. Uh, shame it got cut short from him. But another one, we, another player who's young, who's developing, which is a great thing about the squad. We've got a number of developing young players. And, you know, as we touched on earlier, although it was a season cut short last year, it was still more experience for these guys and these guys are getting orders. And he's one of them, you know, he's he's known all the time, he's hungry. We've done some extra sessions with him uh, that he's that he's prompted us that he wants to attend and, and wants to really progress and learn. So it's great, you know, working working with players like that, you know, and groups you tell you, you know, it does give you a buzz as a manager as well when you when you can see them wanting to progress and you can know that you can help them and help them progress. And and he's really shown that, which is which is really good. Uh, and then you got Mapo, uh, Marcus Mapstone, um, who, again, that he adds that um, I don't want, I don't, what, what do we call it now? I, mean, I don't want to call it uh, experience, oh, maturity, yeah, experience. There we go. Yeah, yeah, adds that experience to, to, to the group. Uh, and again, he came in the games last year and and, um, uh, and really showed that again, just just with his communication, his general calmness around the defence, and uh, uh, and and just we. Again, played really well with, with him in the back, communicating and, and the way he done things. So, um, so yeah, we, we again, it's going to be real some real hard choices to make for us uh, as we you know, as we touched on last year. You know, it's got to, we've got a real strong squad, certainly again defensively as well, uh, and it's going to be some real fighting for places. But um, but it's good. That's what we want: hungry players, hungry players that are going to fight uh, for their places, and uh, um, and we feel we've got all areas covered with, with those uh, centre backs. You can say fantastic. It looks so strong, and I think the fact that they're they're all familiar with each other as well is uh, is a real key. Um, yeah, to going into the season. Yeah. So and also, um, we got we got we got all bases got all bases covered with those four as well in terms of we've got the age and experience of uh, Mapo and Tealy, been there and done it, leaders, and then we've got what will hopefully be the the, the future of the club who will hopefully be here for years to come and hopefully progress with us as we. As we look to push on with with um, Alex Haller and and Waz, which is great because centre center apps are hard to come by, and we've got we've got two great young young prospects there. Yeah. So if we uh, if we step forward again, so looking into that midfield, um, I know we've we've kind of um, we chatted to Matt Smith last week, um, so obviously having him back and is is a great success, a real thing for the for the crowd as well. I know he's a sort of fans' favourite, as we say, over the many years. Um, so, yeah, Danny, do you want to just talk us through um, your midfield lineup? Yeah, of course. Obviously, great to have Smithy back. I've, I've, I've mentioned what, what we think of him uh, previously, so we, uh, we'll leave that one. Um, but probably going to somebody who probably goes under the radar um, in terms of you compare Matt Smith to, the, to this lad is, is Chris Peck. Um, delighted that he's uh, decided to, to re-sign for next year. He puts in so much work that people don't necessarily see, um, but the teammates certainly certainly appreciate it. Um, again, he's got that experience as well. Where he's, he's a little bit older um, now, a little bit wiser. And again, similar to, um, even though he is a little bit older, similar to what Simo said about Alex Hallett, he's, he's one who has put in extra sessions in the, in the off season um, with us. He continually wants to learn and develop and improve his game, despite the fact that um, he is that little bit older. Um, and please have him back back in. Um, Rob Hobbs is um, also committed again um, for the season, which is uh, again a, a super bit of news. Um, I think for whatever a number of reasons, Rob didn't get as much game time as he would have liked um, at the start of last season, partly due to a little bit of unavailability. Ah. Um, and then the form um, of the group, which is 
that's just the nature of our squad. We've got competition. If you if you're out, you're going to struggle to get back in. Um, but as always, he shows a great attitude. He was patient. But actually, when he came came into the side, um, I have to say our our form as a as a as a team picked up in those in those remaining four or five games when he when he came in. So that's that's credit to him for keeping himself in in decent shape and um, showing what he can bring to the side. And he'll be a be a big player for us next year um, as well. Um, Alex Monks um, has also re-signed, so he he came into the club when I first um, first joined. Um, I had him previously at, at Bradford with me, and he, he came across to to Froome. So this will be going into his fourth season now. So he's a bit of a um, a Froome legend, if you like, or um, experienced Froome player. Um, he's um, he's another one. I think he's got so much more to give. I don't think it was um, his best season last year. For a number of reasons, he was picking up niggles and injuries, and um, but I'm expecting him to come back with a bit between his teeth. And he's a midfielder who, who gives you a bit of everything. He's one of those you talk about central midfielders these days. You've got holders and you've got attacking midfield players, whereas um, Monksy um, can do a bit of everything. He can he can break things up. He can play. He can pick a pass. Um, I really like him. Hence why I've had him at a couple of clubs. So expecting him to kick on. Um, and then finally. Um, Nathan Davis um, has agreed to has agreed to come back, which is is good good for us. Um, he, he's another one. He came in on trial. He's been with us on and off for for a little period of time now. But he was um, he was dual registered with um, Carl last year, um, who just secured promotion to the Hellenic Prem. So congratulations to them and him. Um, but is he a level playing field again preseason? I think he's he's another one we've seen bits and pieces of. We've seen him progress. Um, massively didn't have too many minutes but when he did play we saw what what he can do and he'll be pushing all of those boys um through preseason for a starting place so i'm um, excited to see what he can do fantastic um <clears throat> i think what what's good and a, a little bit of an anecdote is um i think i'm to blame for something i remember speaking to alex last year and saying um don't think I've ever seen him miss a penalty, and that's my and my boy was there, and I said, "This this guy knows how to take a penalty. He picks his spot, chooses it, puts it in, and then I think he missed the next two or something like that." He did, so I was he like, did oh, miss no. the next two. That, 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 that was my two. fault. <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll move quickly, swiftly on from that. But um, so um, as always, we all get excited. We're looking at the attackers, looking at the strikers and the wingers. Um, so obviously we've made a couple of announcements. Um, but I'll let you guys. Walk through those those final five. What do you want to do? Take one at a time. Go ahead, Simon. Yeah. Okay. I'll start with Kane. Um, K- Kane. I, I've known Kane for years, even before I came to Fulham. In fact, I played with with Kane when he was younger um, uh, in my my uh, playing days. But um, and so I've seen him develop uh, and continue to develop. And uh, I know I know he's had his critics in the past. I think um, and but. Uh, I think last season he, he really started to show what, what he's about. For me, he, he was very good last season. Um, I, I still struggle to believe that he's kind of still young, still mid-20s really, um, you know, and he's got so much more to give, so much more to learn, uh, and, and he's going to keep getting better and better and better. And uh, I'm delighted we, we, we've got him uh, signed for the year. Um, that will give him the consistency through the season. Um, and, and I have absolutely no doubt he will pick up where he finished last year. Uh, and he is he is going to be one of our main threats this year. Um, and, and yeah, his, his attributes and his it just continue to grow, like I said, with, with experience. Um, and, and yeah, I think we've got him in his prime. And I, th- I think he's going to do some um, some damage next year. Well, his, um, his goal scoring record is fantastic when you look at it on paper. And I think that's yeah. the thing that we see him in so many great positions and he just finds himself in the right place all the time. And yeah, yeah those numbers will grow as the, as he keeps going. The good, the good thing with Kane is that he's, he's not only has he got pace, but he's also got that physicality around him as well. Um, and to find players with pace on that physicality is, 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 is a real kind of hard find. You normally go up the levels and, so for us to have a player like that with those abilities and, and the rest that he's got, you know, it's, it, like I said, he's he, he's built to to play in those uh, in those positions where he's going to get get plenty of goals. So uh, yeah, he still needs to keep working. Still needs to keep working hard. Um, but yeah, absolutely, I'm fully expecting to continue where he left off last season and, and continue to grow. 
So, so talking of uh, strong strikers, who's going to move on to our number 10 for the season? Yeah, um, I'll do this one. So um, again, really pleased to say that Jake Jackson um, will be returning for us. Um, had, a, had a nightmare couple of years, Jake. He'll be the first to, to hold his hands up and, and say that for a number of reasons, injuries and, and what have you. Um, but he has, he's put in a hell of a lot of work again in the off season. Um, he's done a lot of one-to-one sessions with myself and Simo as well. Um, he looks a new man, um, still got work to do. Um, but he's, he's, he's putting in, putting in the hours to try and, to try and get there. We know if we get Jake Jackson fit, um, and fire in just purely based on his, his, his numbers alone. And you, we talk about Kane's numbers being up there. Jack, Jack Jacko's a, are there, um, if not better. Um, and we know exactly what he can do. He gives us something different um, to what our other forwards can give, um, which is great. It's good to have. We need those options. We need to be able to, to play a little bit of a different way every now and again. And, and Jacko does that. So, yeah, I mean, really excited to see what he can do um, in, in free pre-season and then throughout next season. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, I think it's again the fans have real strong memories and the things that he's done before, and hopefully, obviously, we'll start to see that again as well because we saw a good cra- couple of crackers that he scored uh, during this, this time back already. Two minutes um, into his first home game, I think it was against Stoneham in the FA Cup, and yeah. <laughs> uh, hit one in on his on his home debut, and 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 then unfortunately in, injuries took its toll, and yeah, but um, yeah, we're, we're expecting big things. So that, that takes us on to, well, everyone will guess this one if I say our number seven. Um, obviously, John Davis. Is, uh, we, he was joined us for one of our interviews a, a couple of weeks ago again. Um, he, do, anyone do, want to make any comments? Do we need comments? to say a bit about Jono? <laughs> really? Do we? Like, you know, um, obviously, you know, everyone knows the attributes jono has got. Um, you know, let, let's be honest, he could be playing a lot higher. Uh, he could be, he's that good a player. Uh, and so, so it's crucial for us to, you know, um, sort of a player um, of his, you know, ability within within our team. You know, it's it's really good. Also proves that you know he's got an affinity with the club. He's got a strong relationship with the fans. I think all the, the whole package for Jono works for him, uh, and I think he really enjoys it here, which is you know obviously music to our ours, our ears. Um, you know, and and you know we. You know, love having him. You know what he brings to the table, what he brings to the team. Um, yeah, is, is is second to none. So, yeah, absolutely delighted to, to get that one done. Obviously, and and you know, it's good. It's good that he actually enjoys it. And you know, and and you know, it's not really much of a conversation. Do you know what you're doing next year? Yeah, yeah, of course I'm there. You know, like, <laughs> well, and say so hopefully it's, it's, that long with it continue. Yeah, um, absolutely. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, so that that moves us on to another player that we've interviewed. Uh, Danny, do you want to? Yeah, um, so we've already announced that, that Rex has agreed to sign a contract um, with us, which is which is great news. Um, young player with bags of ability, bags of energy, bags of enthusiasm, um, lovely lad as well. Um, and again, another one who's going to go from, from strength to strength. And um, he's adapted to a slightly new position that we, we, we gave him um, halfway through last year and, and took it in his stride. Um, so again, he's another one with options that we can we can play him in multiple positions and he can do a do a superb job and um he's probably just got to up his stats a little bit in in my opinion in terms of goals and assists which um i know he's he's big on that so again um a little mm-hmm. bit older a little bit more mature and i think uh, we'll we'll be seeing a big season from from rex and uh, and appearing at number number 18 on the squad list yeah mr ollis james ollis uh, second season with us um, again, coming to the group last year, um, I know his attributes. I've, I've, I've again, uh, managed him before, had him before, so I, I'm fully aware of his attributes. Uh, I, I think we're very much still to see the best of James. Again, a young lad, still developing, still defining, finding his feet. But, but some of the things he does, I mean, we come back to training. Uh, I've done a few sessions in April, and, and he was he was superb uh, in training. So. Uh, we know again he will progress this year. Again, another player that can play in a in a, in a few positions, and perhaps you know, perhaps we got it wrong at times last year in terms of some of the places we played him. So we've learned from that ourselves as well. Um, and and yeah, again, we're going to see this lad progress um, in, into a good player, and 
you know, again, it just finally balances out the team, you know, with those younger players that are hungry, developing, going forward alongside the experienced players like, you know, like Jono. Um, it's, yeah. it's really exciting. So, yeah. I, th- I think it's fantastic. Well, so that <clears throat> basically concludes our squad announcement. Um, thank you, guys. Um, we just sort of final final comment from you, Danny, at all, just on, on the squad? Yeah. yeah, if I can. I mean, um, no new faces in there. Um, but we brought in new faces at the start of last year that we thought um, were going to add to us. Um, we think we've got a strong squad um, and we think we've got a squad capable of challenging. So my, our main focus was to try and retain those players, um, which I'm delighted that we've done because there's competition for these types of players all the time. Um, so it's a hard enough job just to try and keep them. Um, we've also got a couple of young lads coming in. So we have got a couple of try lists um, and we've got a couple of lads coming in from the academy Um who have um, shown some good things in the in the games that we saw when they came back from COVID. So um, that's encouraging as well to see those young boys coming through. Um, and then finally, I think I just want to um, say um, a massive thank you to our supporters club um, who do a lot of work behind the scenes generating um, funds and continually supported me and the, and the club with um, supporting the playing budget with, with bits and pieces. Um, without them, um, certainly we wouldn't be able to have a squad of, of, of this capability. So um, a massive thank you to all of the sports club. Fantastic. Well, thank you both for your the time this evening. I think it's um, all shaping up to be a fantastic season ahead. Obviously, touch wood and all that, that COVID doesn't have much of an impact on next season. Um, but again, thank you both for your time this evening. Thank you. Cheers, Scott. Pleasure. Cheers. Thanks, everyone.